There you go. All right. Okay, so what we're going to be talking about today is uh, calculating force vectors. And um, vectors have magnitude and direction. Okay? Vectors have magnitude and direction. So examples of this are position, force, and moment. And a vector notation, we usually just do one letter, and then we'll usually draw an arrow over top of it or a ray. So like in geometry, you'll see it uh, written like that. So that's how you notate a vector. Okay? And so I want to give you examples of what magnitude, direction, and sense are. So anytime you draw a vector, you need to include, and this is on your notes, you need to include magnitude, you need to include its direction, and also the sense. Okay, so those are the first three blanks that you need. Magnitude, direction, and sense. Magnitude is the length of the vector. Okay, now we're going to be measuring length kind of, um, maybe not the best word here, because we're going to be measuring force on these vectors. All right? So it's going to be whatever the force is for that particular member. Okay? Now, the example they gave you here, they divided this vector off into three segment, segments. So its magnitude is three. So there on the uh, right beside of your drawing, put the magnitude of that one is three. Okay, the magnitude of this vector is three. Okay, so magnitude is just how long that segment is. Okay, but in a minute, when we get to our examples, they'll be force. All right. All right, so direction is the angle measurement. And we're always going to measure our angles from the x-axis. Okay, so if you are given a vector always kind of connect an x-axis to it. So if that's our coordinate plane right there, and this is 0, 0 in the middle, okay, what is the direction from the x-axis? How do I get to that vector? Well, I have to go 30 degrees, and I have to go counterclockwise from the x-axis to get to the vector. So the direction is... 30 degrees counterclockwise. And I don't make you write out counterclockwise. If you just want to put CCW, that's fine. 30 degrees counterclockwise. So direction is the angle measurement, and then whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Questions so far? Everybody good? Okay. All right, then the last one. These are the two that people get confused, and even I do because I... I'm always looking these up because I get confused between direction and sense. So sense is how, what is what is the direction? Direction is the wrong word, but sense is how is that moving? Well, it's going up and to the right. Okay, so a lot of times I think of that as direction, but it, they call it sense. Sense is up and to the right. Now, what if my vector looked like this instead? Downward and to the left. Down and to the left. And you kind of, again, want to draw like a coordinate plane, right? And on the y-axis, it goes up. And on the x-axis, it goes to the right. Here, my coordinate plane would look like this. So from 0, 0, it would go left on the x-axis and down on the y-axis. Okay, so the end of your vector is always 0, 0, if that helps. Okay, and then you do the sense based on it. Now, this becomes important because when we get ready to, to do resultant forces, we're going to have to add some forces together. And if it's up on the y-axis, is that positive or negative? Positive. And if it's to the right on the x-axis, is it positive or negative? Positive. So later when we start adding resultant forces at the end, you're going to need to know whether those forces are positive or negative. Okay? So that's the reason sense is important. We'll get to that in a little bit. Questions about magnitude, direction, or sense? Everybody good on that? 
All right, and they're going to show you on this next slide kind of what I've already talked about with there's your axis, and then that's up and to the right. There's down and to the right, down and to the left, and then up and to the left. Again, just put the end of your vector at 0, 0, and then you'll be able to figure it out. All right? Okay, next page. So let's review some of the things maybe you've been learning in geometry about right triangles. Okay? So anything that you don't know, I need you to write it down. And even if you do know, you might want to write it down as a refresher. So first of all, a lot of the things that we're going to talk about will only work for right triangles. So what is a right triangle? A triangle with at least, well, it could only have, but it, with one right angle, right? Yeah. But it's definitely a triangle with one right angle, for sure. So the first thing, actually, this one will work for all triangles, but... You need to know that you're going to be using that a lot, is that the sum of all, all three angles in a triangle always add up to 180. So if you don't remember that automatically off the top of your head, I'd write it down. If you remember that, then don't worry about it. But you are going to use that a lot, the fact that all three angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. Okay, they have to. The next thing only works for right triangles, right? And you've been doing this since eighth grade, for sure. Right, and we usually write it like this, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's Pythagorean theorem. Okay, somebody remind me what a, b, and c are. The two which, ones, which ones are the legs? A and, b. a and b are the legs. So these are the legs. And what's this one? Hypotenuse. What is a hypotenuse? The slanted side. What, Dakota? The longest side of the it is the longest side. How can I tell which side's the longest side if they don't give me measurements? It's opposite of the right. It's absolutely opposite of the right angle. Any any side that's opposite of something won't touch it. So if this is the right angle, the side that does not touch that angle is that one. So that's the hypotenuse. Okay, it's opposite the right angle. Okay. What do A and B and C represent? I know you said legs and hypotenuse, but what about them? What? Mm -hmm. The length. These have nothing to do with angles. Okay, don't get that confused. They're the lengths of the legs and the hypotenuse, how long they are, not anything to do with angles. Okay, so we need the, to know about Pythagorean theorem. Then the next thing we need to know about, which I'm sure is all of your all's favorite, is the trig. The trig functions, right? Can't skip that part. We're going to use trig functions a lot in this lesson or in this uh, project. Okay. Now, SOCATOA is just an acronym of a way for you to remember the trig function. There's nothing special about it, other than it's just a way to remember the trig functions. Okay. So let me explain. Um, the sine trig function, the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side of that angle over the hypotenuse of that in relationship to that angle. Okay, so the opposite side, so write these down under trig functions, write the ratios. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that's where this comes from right here. It's sine opposite over hypotenuse, right? It's just a way to remember that. Cosine of an angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. The adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Okay, so that's that part right here. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Right? Tangent of an angle is the opposite side over the adjacent side. Okay, so that's this part right here. Tangent opposite over adjacent. So it's just a way, and I'll tell you the ACT loves these. 
Okay, so if you can know your trig functions, it's going to help you out in the math on the ACT. Because they love trig functions on the ACT test. All right, so Sakato, if you can remember that, sine opposite over hypotenuse, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse. Now, you also have listed under there how to. These three that I wrote up here are if you have an angle and you're trying to find either the opposite side or the hypotenuse. You're trying to find the side. If you don't know the angle, then to find the angle, you do what's called the inverse of that. So in your calculator, you usually have to hit the second button, right? And do the inverse. So it's opposite over hypotenuse. So then to find an angle using the sine function, I would do inverse sine and then put my two sides in. And it'll tell me what the angle measure is. Or if I want to find the angle using the cosine function, I'll do the inverse cosine. But use the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. Or if I want to find the angle using the tangent function, I'm going to do inverse tangent. Oops, I wrote that wrong. Yeah, opposite over adjacent. Try that again. Okay, inverse tangent, opposite over adjacent. Okay. Okay. So inverse or the second func the second button on your calculator is to find angles. The other way, these, the ones in black, are the front sides. Okay? We're going to do examples, so don't worry if you're like a little bit lost. Right now, I need you to just get the functions down. How many of you have had the trig already? Has everybody seen it at least? Because some of you are just now in geometry, right? Some of you, if you're just now in geometry, you must, you might just now be seeing it, right? You did do work last year. You did do some of it last year in physics? In algebra? Okay, good. Okay, so we're going to do an example of this, okay? So we're going to do an example. So everybody's got the trig functions down, right? Okay. All right, and then we're going to get to where we have one. It would give us a degree measure here. All right, so this is the one I want you to. Tell you what, let's skip this one. We'll do the next one. Let's let's write that one down. Can you go up for me so this is not filled in? Go uh, Use the up arrow. There you go. Thanks. All right. What is the magnitude? So I want you to draw this one for me. So draw a vector. This is our vector right here. So on your paper, draw that vector. And if it helps you. Go ahead and draw an x and a y axis where the 0, 0 starts at the end of the vector on the opposite side of the arrow. Okay. Okay, everybody draw that. Okay. Now, first of all, what is the magnitude of the vector? 75. Magnitude of the vector is its force, or its length, but in this case it's the force. So the magnitude is 75 pounds. Okay, that's the magnitude. What is the direction of the vector? 35 degrees, but that's not enough. He's right, it is 35 degrees. But now we've got to say, from the x-axis, how do I get to the vector? Which way? Clockwise, yeah. It's 35 degrees clockwise from the x-axis. Did I get so far? Okay, now, what's the sense of that vector? Down and to the right. Now, the only reason I might want you to put it the opposite way, although I usually say down or up first as well, is I don't want you to get confused about x and y, right? Because x is the right and left stuff, right? And the y is the down and up stuff, right? 
right? So sometimes if you can, get in the habit of putting it in x and y. Because what do I know now about the x of this vector? Is it positive or negative? Positive, because to the right is always positive. What do I know about the y component of that vector? It's negative. That's going to become important to us in a minute. Okay? So you might just get, get in the habit. I know the x component is positive, and I know the y component is negative. All right. Now, all vectors, everything at an angle, we're going to have to make an x and a y component to. So we're going to draw that in over here. I'm going to draw it in red. So I want to go down and to the right. So I'm making a triangle out of that. I'm making a right triangle out of that. Okay? I know this one's going down. I know this one's going to the right. Okay, good so far? You know what? You could draw, and, and actually, Ethan, you're right, that would be easier to draw it up there. That way we don't have to find another angle. Let's redraw it. Uh, Ethan wants me to draw it over here. What? I guess you're. I think either way. Um, so let's let's start here. Does everybody know why it would be easier to draw it up here? Yeah, this angle we already know. This one would have been 55, right? Because 55 plus 35. But if you don't want to find it, then you could draw it up there instead. So that's still to the right and down, right? Okay, so we would still be okay. That'll help us just not to have to figure out something else. Not that it's hard, but we don't have to. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to find these other two sides or these components of a ve that vector, the x component and the y component. Doesn't matter which one you find first. So let's just find the x first. We're going to find that side. Okay? Here's our angle that we know. That, that angle right there is 35 degrees. Which trig function should I use to figure out that side? Oh, let's, let's stop just for a minute. This 75 pounds, which side is it? Hypotenuse. That's the hypotenuse. If you want to if you want to label that one. That was the hypotenuse. So we know the hypotenuse, so we know we can't use tangent, right? Because tangent does not have hypotenuse in it. Okay, what can we use? Cosine or sine. Okay, some of people are saying sine, some people are saying cosine. So cosine you should use cosine. Cosine because we're gonna find the adjacent side. If we wanted to find the opposite side, which again, it doesn't matter which one you find first, but if you wanted to find the opposite side, you would use sine. Okay? So we'll end up using both of them. All right, so let's do our adjacent side first. So we got cosine, and then we need to put our angle. So it's 35 degrees equal to adjacent. We don't know it, so I'm going to put my x there. But I do know that the hypotenuse is 75. Right? Does everybody understand where I, so this was my formula, right? This was my formula. And in place of that, I put the angle. I don't know the adjacent side, but I do know the hypotenuse is 75. Right? So put this over one and cross multiply. Okay? So I've got two fractions equal to each other. I can cross multiply. X times one is X. Then in your calculator, and be careful right here, you need to do cosine 35, enter. close your parentheses, or enter, times 75. Make sure that 75 doesn't get in the parentheses with the 35. Otherwise, you're telling the angle, telling it that that angle is huge, right? 35 times 75. No, the angle is only 35. So Kylie did it and got 61.4. Everybody agree? You can't. Oh, okay. Now there are certain, there are certain like 45, 45, like uh, isosceles triangles that you know that the ratios are, but ones that have weird angles, not necessarily. But 30, 60, 90s, yes, maybe, but not these. Okay? So yeah, you need your calculator. Everybody know where the trig functions are on their calculator? 
Okay. Okay. So now we want to find. So we know this side right here is sixty-one point four. Sixty-one point four what? Pounds. This is force again. Okay. So if we're talking about our bridge. This way is taking 61.4 pounds, and then we're going to figure out this one, too. Okay? Anybody have any ideas about how we could find the y component right here? We could do a theorem and b You could actually do Pythagorean theorem here. What else could you do? You could do sine function. What else could you do? You actually do tangent at this point because you don't know opposite, but you do know adjacent. So you actually have three choices here of which, what, however you want to find it. You can do Pythagorean theorem. You got lots more information now, right? I like the trig functions, but it depends on what you like, right? I think the trig functions are faster because it's just cross multiplying. I, I think it's faster, so I'm going to use sine is what I'm going to do. But you know, you don't have you you've got choices on this one. So I got sine 35 is equal to the opposite side, which is y. We don't know what it is over the hypotenuse, which is 75. Let's put that over 1 and cross multiply again. So y times 1 is y. Sine 35 times 75. Again, be careful and make sure that the 75 doesn't get in the parentheses. Point. Okay, 0, 1. Okay. 43.01. Now let's check something. Positive or negative? On the x, positive. positive. What about the y? Negative. negative. That one's negative. So should we have used the inverse sign? No, inverse sign gives you angles. We already knew the angle. It's not. A, so just don't forget. Like I wouldn't put my positives and negatives in this. I would just at the end go back to my sense and look and figure out if I need to put a negative on it. Okay. Just don't forget that step, though, because that's going to be important when we get ready to do the next thing, which is resultant forces. Everybody good with the trick? Okay. All right. Next thing is resultant forces, and this is where I did not get to in fourth period. So fourth period, we stop here. But I promised Chandler we were going to get through it. He's so excited. Oh, yeah. I'm Nothing like doing trig on a Friday, right? Yeah, you got a three-day weekend. There you go. All right. Um, all right, here we go. All right, so what I need you to draw on your paper, so Jaren, stay with me. Um, last page. Draw down here. Pam, Daniel, you with me? We're going to draw down here. We're going to draw these two papers. So draw this one. Put your, put your x and y axis, but this is 0, 0 right here, right in the middle there. And then I've got another vector right here. Okay, so I've got two vectors this time. I've got vector C and I've got vector D. Vector C and vector D. For vector C, what's the magnitude? 300 pounds. What's the direction? 60 degrees what? From the x-axis, it's 60 degrees counterclockwise. What's the sense? Right and up. So will those be positive or negative? Both of them? No. Yes. Both of them? Both of them. Danny thought I was trying to trick him. No, they're both going to be positive. Right is positive and up is positive. Okay? True. Okay, what about D? What about its magnitude? 400 pounds. What about its direction? 30 clockwise this time. 
And what about its sense? Down and to the right, or right and down. Right, I, the board has not apparently let me put a G there. Right and down. So, what about that? Positive or negative? Positive or negative. Positive, negative. So the X will be positive, the Y will be negative. Okay, so far so good. We got magnitude, direction, and sense. Again, that one was clockwise because to get to the x-axis, sorry, to get from the x-axis to the vector, we had to get, we had to go clockwise. If you think about it, you could just think of it as a clock. Yeah, absolutely. So this is the clock this way, which I know clocks are like a thing of the past, right? But still have to know them. The old hand clocks are a thing of the past. Yeah. No, actually, you separately. All right, stay with me. I've got I got to finish in eleven minutes. You guys good? All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna each one. We said up and to the right, didn't we? If this is our if this is our axis. Okay. So, I'm going to draw my triangle like this, to the right and up. And this angle, was it 60? Okay. So, this 300 pounds is which side? It's, it's here, the hypotenuse. Okay, this is my Y component, this is my X component. Doesn't matter which one you find first. Let's just find x first. Which trig function am I going to use to find x this time? Cosine. Guys, if this side touches your given angle, it's the adjacent side. So it's got to be cosine. Okay? So we're going to do cosine 60 equal to x over 300 this time. My hypotenuse is 300. So x is equal to whatever cosine 60 times 300 is. 150. 150. 150 pounds. Okay. The y component, I'm going to use sine 60 because this side is opposite of the 60. So it's y over 300. So whatever sine 60 times 300 is. Thank you. 259.8. So this is 259.8. And we said based on the sense, we said both of those are positive, right? Okay, John? Uh, Uh, no, because the other one has a different angle. It's a 30 degree angle. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Everybody good on that one? Jaren, you with me? Okay, let's do the next one. Okay. So, oh, I'm clicking. Can you go back for me? Go back. Like up. Up one more. All right, so this is the vector D. This is vector D. Remember, here is our vector. This is our x and y axis. And there was our 30 degrees. Okay, so if we want to find the x component and the y component, what will I use to find x? Still cosine. Hey, what I don't want you to think is that every time you're going to use cosine to find x. Just be careful. Like, you guys will think, oh, I can find cosine every time. You can use cosine every time. It just happens that both of these you can, but that's not always true. Okay, so cosine, what's our angle? 30. 30. What's our hypotenuse this time? 
400 is our hypotenuse this time. Okay, so cross multiply. So whatever cosine 30 times 400 is, and Danny's telling me it's 36.4. 346.4. Positive or negative? Positive. That was to the right. Okay. Let's find the y component. Sine 30. Y over 400. So sine 30 times 400. What is it? 200. Just 200. Okay, but somebody said it is negative 200 because this time the y component is going down. So this is negative 200. And again, all these are pounds. These are forces. Okay? So far, we have found the x and y component. So what we're wanting to do is put those two forces together. We've got, we had one that was going up and to the right. We had another one that's going down and to the left. What is kind of the sum of those? You know, what's the resultant force? You know, if you're pulling this way and I'm pulling this way at different forces, what, what's happening here, okay? So this is what we're going to do, and this is not too bad. So what you're going to do is add your x and y component forces together, okay? So we're going to take the sum of our forces in the x direction. We're going to add those together. So what were our x component forces? 150 and 246. And 246 what? 346. Point what? 4. Point 4. So if you add those two together, our x is 496.4 pounds. Okay? <coughs> Now we're going to sum our forces in the y direction. I mean, I know we had a negative 200. What was the other one? 259.8. So 59.8 is that one. Okay. Not too bad so far. Now we got to measure. Now we've got to draw. A new triangle with this is our legs now right this is x and y what do we not know this time okay. the hypotenuse we don't know it and we don't know the angle either you're right okay you guys got those numbers because i'm about to erase those yeah all right so draw a right triangle uh both of them are positive so what do we know about this vector up and to the right, we know that. So we got this and this going on, right? The x was for what? 496.4. The y was 59.8. So what's the magnitude of this vector? How could we figure that out? Tangent. Uh, no, I don't know my angle yet. No. That, unfortunately, I don't know my angle yet to use tangent. I'd probably use Pythagorean theorem. No, it's got to be bigger. Because remember, the hypotenuse is the longest side. So I know it's bigger than this. So, Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Really big Okay. So 496.4 squared plus 59.8 squared, and when we just add those together, we get 249,989 equals C squared, and then Bryson's right, we need to take the square root of that, and if we round it, which is probably good enough, it's really, really close to 500 pounds. So the resultant force is 500 pounds. So that means if I'm pulling, if we've got a chain like it was in that picture, you know, that it's got tension at 300 pounds at this angle, and the other one had tension at 400 pounds at this angle, 
then the resultant force is 500 pounds. Okay, that's the magnitude. What's the, what is the direction? How could I figure out the direction? I need to find the angle. How am I going to figure out the angle? Inverse. Tangent. The inverse and any trig function you want. Which one do you want to use, Bryson? Because we have all three sides. You want your sign? Okay, so Bryce is going to find the angle by using the inverse sign. Remember, that's opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, so Bryson, what's our opposite side? Huh? Look, look here. What's, which one is our opposite side? Yeah, remember, it's this one that doesn't touch that angle that we're trying to figure out. So it's uh, 59.8 over... The hypotenuse we just found was 500. So type that in your calculator. Exact. We don't have to cross multiply this time. Everything's on the same side as an equal sign. Yeah, so we're getting like 6.87 degrees. Everybody get that? It's a really small angle. You guys knew that already, didn't you? 6.87 degrees. Hey, by the way, please make sure your calculators are in degree mode and not radian mode. So make sure, like, if you have a calculator like Justin's, make sure it says DEG in the screen. If you have a calculator like Ethan, you might have to push mode and make sure it says degree mode. Mine says degree. Okay. So make sure it's in degree, not radians. Hang on, stop. One more. So direction is what? 6.187 counterclockwise. Counterclockwise is exactly right. And then what about since? We already knew that probably. They're both positive. It's right and up. Okay. You can stop it. Making sure I take a photo of this. So I Good job. We did it. <laughs> you get to do it Wednesday.